The PicoDev air quality sensor is a multi-gas sensor that detects volatile organic compounds, things like ethanol, oxidizing gases, and even byproducts of human respiration and metabolism. The sensor is capable of sampling these gases and producing outputs for total volatile organic compounds, equivalent CO2, and air quality index. These metrics are commonly used to monitor indoor air quality and control ventilation systems. I'm gonna show you how to get started reading your PicoDev air quality sensor with a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect these two together and begin sampling air quality metrics. But first, a bit about the sensor. The PicoDev air quality sensor features two PicoDev connectors for daisy chaining connections with other PicoDev hardware. There's an address switch labeled ASW. This is used for uniquely addressing a second air quality sensor. Leave the switch in the off position for now. Across the bottom, there's also a breakout header for more experienced makers. To follow along, you'll of course need a Raspberry Pi Pico with the pin soldered facing down. That's to plug into a PicoDev expansion board for Raspberry Pi Pico. You'll need a PicoDev air quality sensor and a PicoDev cable to connect everything together. Plug the Pico into the expansion board and make sure that the USB connector is on the same side as the zero pin. Plug in your PicoDev cable to one end and connect the other end to your sensor. Make sure this address switch has stayed off and connect to your computer with USB. In the article for this tutorial, find the download section and select the dev board you're using, Raspberry Pi Pico. Right click PicoDev Unified and save link as, and I'll save this to a PicoDev directory in my documents. And do the same with PicoDev ENS160, that's the device driver. Save link as to PicoDev. We'll program the Pico with MicroPython using a Thonny. If you haven't used Thonny before with a Pico, check the article for more help. Navigate to where you've saved those files, connect to your Raspberry Pi Pico, select both files and upload to. And when you see those two files uploaded to your Raspberry Pi Pico, you're ready to proceed. Scroll down to the example, reading air quality metrics. Highlight all of that code and copy with control C and I'll paste it into this new script. We're ready to run. Click the green run button and save the file to your Raspberry Pi Pico as main.py to run it automatically. If all goes well, you ought to see some air quality metrics being printed to the shell. Here we have a few rows of information. We have AQI as one, which is excellent. We have TVOC at 38 parts per billion. ECO2 at about 400 parts per million. Excellent. And the status is initial startup. Let's have a look at each of these in turn. Air quality index or AQI breaks down air quality into a range between one and five, where one is excellent and five unhealthy. And there's also a few recommendations that go along with it. This is derived from a German standard, but it's used a fair bit internationally. And you can see that there are a few recommendations for ventilation and some recommended exposure limits. Equivalent CO2 is another measure that gets used by industry, particularly in the HVAC or ventilation industry. And this is broken down into several ranges along with ventilation requirements. And TVOC or total volatile organic compounds is just the measure that the sensor is performing. It is the sum of all its measurements. There's also something here called status and we're currently in the initial startup. The PicoDev air quality sensor has three states, initial startup, warm up, and operating okay. When the sensor first powers on, it will be in this initial startup state, which lasts up to an hour. You can still use your sensor right away in this state, but the accuracy will be improved once the sensor has warmed up. If the sensor is allowed to run continuously for at least 24 hours, it will never need this long initial startup process again. Instead, it will perform a much faster warm up, which only lasts a few minutes. Let's take a closer look at the example. We start by importing the device driver and a function to create a delay. We call the initialization function and that returns a air quality sensor object that we assign to sensor. So anytime that we see the word sensor in this script, we're referring to our physical air quality sensor. And then inside the infinite loop, we query the sensor for the AQI property, the TVOC and the ECO2 properties. And we store those results in some variables. As we've seen, these properties actually contain more than just a number sometimes. For example, the AQI property that we're printing here 
has a numerical property, but also a description. So when it comes time to printing these values, we can print aqi.value or aqi.rating. TVOC returns just a value, so we can print that numeric value in the shell. But when we come to ECO2, again, we have some value component as well as some rating component. And this is quite convenient because we don't need to do anything to actually extract what the description for that rating is. We can just read it straight from the sensor. If we just want to work with the value, say to create some kind of threshold, then we can just extract the property that we need. I'll show you how that works. Let's take the AQI and print a message if the AQI goes above two. We can remove all of this code. Actually, I'll, I'll leave the print AQI in. And if AQI.value is greater than two, print turn on the fan. Now, when I rerun the script, we have an AQI of one or two. But if I hold the sensor above this bottle of disinfectant, we immediately have gone to an unhealthy fume and we have an AQI of five. Turn on the fan. Side note, if you're unsure whether you should be messing around with bottles of chemicals, that probably means that it's a bad idea. Now it's possible to read from multiple devices. You can read up to two air quality sensors on the same PicoDev bus. The only requirement is that they have a different address switch setting. That's the ASW switch in the bottom right. The sensor on the left is my first sensor that I started the video with, and this has its ASW switch off. And for my second sensor, I've set the ASW switch before plugging it in. Now in the article, we can find the multiple sensors example. Copy that, and I'll paste over everything in main. Now when I run this script, we ought to see two independent values being read. And here we have the TVOC as measured by sensor A and sensor B. Sensor A is the sensor that I've been running this whole tutorial with, and we can see that its data is a little different to sensor B because sensor B is still warming up. To do this in code, we just need to initialize each sensor with the ASW argument. We can see we have similar imports at the top of the script, but now we have two initialization functions for these sensors. The first sensor, sensor A, has ASW equal to zero. That is the first sensor with the address switch off. For the second sensor, sensor B, with the address switch on, we pass in ASW equals one. And now we have two instances of a PicoDev air quality sensor in the code. When we want to read from them, we just refer to them as sensor A and sensor B. And then we can access the properties like .tvoc, .aqi, etc. So there you have a quick guide to the PicoDev air quality sensor. We were able to read air quality with three different metrics and even read from two devices. So you could say measure air quality on different sides of a wall. If you make anything cool from this starter project or you just have some questions, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. See you next time.